It is Thursday, April 20th, and you know what that means. 743 days until Avengers Infinity War Part 2 hits theaters. Yeah, we're going to have a marvelous day here at Comic Book Now. What's up, Comic Book Nation? It's Thursday. We're back. It, we, we love it. It's our favorite time of the week. I hope it's yours, too. I'm your host, Brandon Davis. Call me if you need. Joined by Charlie Ridgely. Week in and week out. Welcome to Comic Book Now. Uh, Charlie, what you doing all show long? All show long, I'm watching right now. I'm watching everything everybody's saying. That's why we were doing the wave before, because you guys are asking for it. And we're, we're giving it to you. We're giving you everything you're asking for. Who asked Not for everything. the wave? Do we see who it was? Um, well, Reese asked for like four. It was Reese so. Williams. We gave him the wave. Yeah. All right. Uh, we might give you something else, actually. Uh, yeah. We have something cool to give away. We're going to tell you how to win Baby Groot at the end of the show. Uh, you know, we got to keep you watching. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have to deal with us for about 30 minutes if you want to take Groot <laughs> home. Uh, but it's not that bad. I promise. We're going to talk about a lot of Marvel stuff. I've actually seen Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 twice now. <sighs> And so jealous. It's, it's so So good. jealous. Uh, and that all comes from a trip to uh, Los Angeles where I got to go to Marvel Studios. Mm -hmm. I got to go to the premiere of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, but even better than that. And it, it's hard to say. It's, it's hard to believe I did something better, better than, that. than that. I went to Marvel Studios. They opened the doors for the first time to anybody who doesn't work there. Kevin Feige was there. Got to talk to him for about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Learned all about Marvel stuff. It was, it was amazing. First of all, there's a, some big, there are some big takeaways. The Infinity War Part 2 title, they don't want to release it until after the first Infinity War comes out. He said he wants to hold on to it for as long as they can. They know what it is, but they're not going to release oh, it. Oh, they, they are, so they all know. If, Kevin Feige knows. Okay, I know, I'm they sure the not, Russos probably know. Yeah, I'm sure the Russos okay. know. But he says they don't want to tell anybody. Uh, they want to wait as long as they can. And, and they're not going to tell you the titles of their upcoming movies like they did with all of Phase 3. They're not going to do that again. And I th I, I'm kind of glad because I thought I kind of took the fun out of it. Now, do you mean the titles or what the movies are, like, the characters of the movies? Like, they're going to wait until a year out and then be like, oh, by the way, next year, uh, you know, a Nova solo movie right. is coming. I, th uh, I mean, as far as I know, he said they're not going to announce their movies and their titles right away, which that's I think is awesome. cool because no, then, awesome. it, then it keeps you the post credit scene guessing. And with Guardians of the Galaxy, sit through the credits because there's four post credit scenes and one of them is really, really epic. Uh, another thing Kevin Feige said, they're not going to be going for R-rated movies anytime soon. He applauded Deadpool, he applauded Logan, he said they worked, but they didn't work strictly because they were R-rated, they, they worked because they were original and unique, which he, he seems like he has nothing but admiration for. Mm -hmm. uh, so they don't have any plans right now to go R-rated, but they do have a little bit of plans to go for more Oscars and stuff like that. He says they, they kind he kind of yeah. is starting to care a little bit and, and want a little bit more yeah. award season recognition for Marvel films, which I think, hey, Suicide Squad just took yeah, home I mean, a, an Oscar. Let's, let's go, Marvel. What are you doing? Did, 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 they, did they have an idea? Did they want to go like a more dramatic, serious role with some characters? Or was it more of a visual effects? Like we want to make sure we're getting Oscars for the technical categories. I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, the question was, you know, why don't you guys care? You guys have totally stepped away from the direction of caring mm -hmm. about Oscars. And he said, we're starting to invest more in trying to have a presence there. So That's awesome. We'll That's see. Awesome. Uh, he, I also said to him, uh, Josh Brolin cast as Cable last week. Mm -hmm. And he's also playing Thanos, obviously. He, they, he said he has filmed a bunch of Thanos work already. He said he's, quote, killing it. And he said he needs Thanos. What, from the, the minute Thanos gets on the screen in the Avengers Infinity War movie, he wants audiences to be like, oh, that's why they were building him up for all this time. And he said that they nailed it. And the minute you see Thanos on the screen, you're going to understand why Thanos has been held. I got chills point. for that, man. Uh, that's I, nuts. Thanos that is, is my nuts. favorite character. Uh, definitely my favorite villain. One of my favorite characters. So I'm excited about that. And he also thinks he's going to be a fantastic uh, a couple other things they showed us. Uh, Korg is going to be in Thor, played by director, Ty director Taika Waititi. Uh, Korg is the rock monster from uh, the Planet Hulk storyline, so that was pretty cool. They showed us some uh, visual effects work of him in action. Uh, there was awesome Ant-Man concept art. Peyton Reed showed it to us, and it showed Ant-Man actually shrinking down, getting a bottle of Coke, shaking it up, making himself gigantic, or making himself normal, but making the bottle of Coke gigantic, taking the cap off, and using it as a weapon, which I think is so That's clever. That's crazy. It was really cool. And uh, we got our first look at Brie Larson as Captain Marvel, and I thought the costume looked amazing. And it was concept art. I don't think she's worn it yet. They're still adjusting the hair and whatnot. Uh, but the costume looked fantastic. It was a more, I guess, based in an acceptable reality, uh, you know, mm -hmm. whatever you can take with superheroes. Yeah. wasn't quite as bright and colorful, but it was really cool. Uh, but all this Marvel stuff, let's keep it going. Uh, I went to see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 uh, twice this week. It was fantastic. I got to interview the entire cast, pretty much. It was, it was really a fun time. This, these guys are so much fun to talk to. But Guardians of the Galaxy, you know it's rooted with so many 80s references, right? Does the cast actually know about those references? I wanted to find out. 
So Guardians of the Galaxy has quickly become one of the most iconic franchises of today's generation. So I'm quizzing all the cast members on some 80s knowledge. So I'm gonna give you a movie, start a line, and see if you can finish it. This but is gonna be unfortunately <laughs> disappointing for you. <laughs> but I think you might get some. Here we go, here's one from Scarface. Say hello. To my little friend! To my little friend. <laughs> to my little friend. To my little friend. To my little friend. <laughs> there it is. To my little friend. <laughs> To my little penis. Oh, like that? I saw a different version of it. Wait. Oh, did you say Scarface? Scarface. Sorry, I thought you said Scar. Okay, Scarface. Yeah. Say hello. I saw. To my little friend. <laughs> yeah. So I think I saw a different movie than you. Yeah. Did. Yeah. Uh, the Terminator. I'll be back. Back. Be back. 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 This is, this is some good. Good. You know your 80s. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Right back. That's no. it. You nailed it. Crush I'll be it. back. <laughs> this one has been uh, a little trouble for some of the, your co-stars. You mess with the bull, you'll get the horns. You get the horns. Ooh. I haven't seen the movie. You mess with the, you mess with the bull. I'm just gonna hazard a guess. You mess with me. You get the horns. That's it. You get the horns. Wow, that one is. That's that a is a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> you get the horns. There it is. Four for four. <laughs> I did volume it. Two. I got all of them. This is a bonus one just for you. Uh, I don't know about you, but I have an aversion to getting like FUBAR. FUBAR. And what is FUBAR? F***ed up beyond all recognition. And that is a perfect <laughs> score. Five for five. I'm telling you, that cast was a blast, and it shows in the movie, in Guardians Volume 2. You can, we're going to get our uh, full review up on April 24th. Uh, and I can't wait to share it with you guys. And I have so many people asking questions about it. There's only so much I can say uh, for now, but on April 24th, we will have all the details. I will tell you how the movie ends. No, I'm just kidding. I'm and and, and this, that's big because like, he's not just saying that. He hasn't told me anything. I've been bugging him all day long to tell me what happens, to tell me about the post credit scenes. And he still hasn't said a word to me. He hasn't broke yet. I'm, I'm going to try and wear him down before the movie comes out, but we'll, we'll see. I, I, I would love a really nice steak dinner. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, we, had, we had the first trailer for Marvel's Cloak and Dagger series released online. Uh, and, and some people seem pretty excited about it. This is pretty cool. Uh, you have these two characters. It's, you got like a young adult mm. type deal going on here. It's on free form, so it's kind of what you expect. Yeah. Uh, you know, Charlie, I want to know your expectations. You kinda, you're very enthusiastic about a lot of things. Yeah. So I want to know, are you excited for Cloak and Dagger? Um, to an extent. I am, uh, you know, Freeform makes good stuff for what for what their their audience is. Um, the audience is not me. The audience is not you know middle twenties guys. Like it's, it's not for us. But it looks really really well done. It looks like they developed the characters really well. Like they, they really brought Cloak and Dagger to life. I love what they're doing with her little with her little glowing dagger thing. Like I'm gonna watch it. I think it's I think it's gonna be a good show. I just don't know if it's really gonna be something that I'm. Right. Super into, but it looks like they did a great job. I mean, I think uh, this trailer just didn't really tell you what the what what the story is. It it did it did link it to the Marvel Cinematic mm -hmm. Universe, which was cool through the Roxxon Corp shot, yeah. uh, where you have you have them sitting on top of the building. That was cool, and yeah. you know Roxxon has been tied to Daredevil and Iron Man yeah. movies. Uh, but I just felt like this didn't do much besides tell us the fact that you have two characters in this kind of right. weird superhero teen drama. Which I, I'm totally okay with that because the show doesn't come out till 2018. So we don't need to know any information right now. We don't need to know anything about the story. It's just kind of, it was more of a sizzle reel than a, than a, a, a trailer. You know, uh, we're just kind of I learning like about Thor, it. I like the Thor Ragnarok approach. Show me, show me the whole movie. Okay, well, you know. <laughs> uh, speaking of Marvel TV, Marvel's New Warriors, another title being adapted to television, which, yes, it follows the Defenders, the Punisher, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the Runaways, and Cloak and & Dagger, has announced which heroes will make up its lineup, and this is pretty exciting. When New Warriors debuts on Freeform, the same network as Cloak & Dagger, uh, the adventures will include Mr. Immortal, Night Thrasher, Speedball, Microbe, Debris, and last, and actually, certainly most, Squirrel Girl. There they are. There's the squad. Uh, this roster provides a lot of room for some unique powers to be introduced to the MCU, plus... A great banter amongst the squad. Casting hasn't come out yet. Uh, I'm not sure how, long, how far along they are in that process, but we expect the show to target a similar audience to Cloak & Dagger uh, with its tone uh, seeing as it is calling Freeform the network formerly known as ABC Family Home. And uh, here's some news that got the world very, very excited and gets DC into our mix on a very Marvel week. Uh, Joss Whedon, the man who directed both The Avengers and its sequel, Age of Ultron, will be writing, directing, and producing a live-action back row movie for Warner Brothers and the DCEU. Here's what we know. 
The movie will follow the New 52's take on Barbara Gordon, focused on telling the story of why she put on the cowl. And it sounds like Whedon really wants to plug an unknown actress into the role, but doesn't have anybody in mind just yet. So there goes all your Emma Stone wishes. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, but what, one thing that's really cool I thought that I would like to share with everybody was another thing uh, Kevin Feige said was that Joss Whedon actually called him to tell him that he was going to do a Batgirl movie. He was going to tell him he's going to do a DC movie, That's which awesome. he didn't have to do. Right. Kevin pointed that out. He didn't have to call. He's not under contract. He's not obligated. He, mm. he can go do DC whenever he wants. He can go do whatever comic book movie he wants, yeah. but he still felt the need to call, which just goes to show, I think, that Marvel, they, they're such a family there. Like yeah. you just saw with my interviews, they make you feel so welcome. Absolutely. It was Absolutely. really cool. Uh, but if that Batgirl news did not just blow your mind, uh, I think this will. The eighth installment of the Fast and Furious movie franchise has officially had a larger opening weekend at the box office than the seventh Star Wars movie. I'm not kidding. I'm 100% serious. The Fate of the Furious raced to $532 million worldwide, topping The Force Awakens' journey to $529 million in its opening weekend. The record before that was previously held by Jurassic World until Star Wars Episode Seven came along. But you can bet that if Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 or Justice League cannot top Fate of the Furious, Star Wars The Last Jedi will get absolutely. the job done. There is absolutely no question Star Wars The Last Jedi is... Do you, could Star Wars The Last Jedi do $600 million worldwide in its first weekend? I mean, I, I don't know if it will, but as far as potential, no other movie has ever had that potential, but this one does. Yeah. If there's going to be one to do it, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be The Last Jedi. I mean, maybe Avatar 2 when it comes out, just because the first one did so well. But that's a lot of guap, guys. So much money. You could probably make like so 30 more Star Wars movies just on that revenue. You could make like, like two Avengers movies with that. <laughs> Well, not, not I guess Infinity unless War. they're Infinity War, they're only one. They're only one. You can make half of two, uh, which is one. Speaking of Star Wars, though, the hype is far from over for that trailer released at Celebration almost a week ago now. Charlie Ridgely here put it under a magnifying glass and broke it down in a segment we like to call Shot by Shot. What's up, Comic Book Nation? The very first teaser trailer for Star Wars The Last Jedi was just released, and in true Star Wars fashion, it's packed with a ton of hidden secrets. Let's take a look at what you might have missed as we break down this trailer shot by shot. Immediately, we see Rey having trouble breathing. She's on Octo on the same island where she found Luke, so this is likely part of her Jedi training. Hey, Lucasfilm made this movie. Here, you get a wider shot of the island similar to what was seen in The Force Awakens. This again proves the vast isolation that Luke has retreated to. Luke can be heard saying, Yes, breathe. Which is another sign that Rey is undergoing some serious training. As Luke says, Reach out. There's an awesome shot of Ray's hand with rocks floating up from the earth. No, this isn't a Batman v Superman Easter egg. This is proof that Ray is getting a handle on how to use the Force. If you recall, she harnessed the power in The Force Awakens, but she had no idea how to control it. We can expect a much more powerful and dangerous Ray in The Last Jedi. As the screen goes dark, Luke asks, What do you see? This shot is undoubtedly General Leia looking over a map in the Resistance headquarters. They've already found Luke, so she's probably preparing for some sort of battle against the First Order. There is more underneath the surface of this scene, however. If you listen closely, you can hear the whisper of Leia in A New Hope, saying, Light. This shattered mask belongs to Kylo Ren, who was last seen escaping the Starkiller base at the end of The Force Awakens. There's a big callback in this scene as well, as you can faintly hear Obi-Wan Kenobi from the original trilogy saying, Darkness. Rey then says darkness as a second reply to Luke's earlier question. So as she trains, Rey is feeling and exploring both sides of the Force. Here's what looks like some old Jedi texts on a hidden shelf. Luke has explored much of the history of the Jedi, and the journey has brought him here. It does look a little odd, but you can't exactly keep your Jedi scrolls on an Ikea shelf. As the camera zooms in, Yoda's voice can be heard very faintly, and he says... in reference to the Force. Here we see a close-up of one of those texts with the classic Jedi symbol printed on the front. You see a gloved hand touching the cover as Rey hints that there's a balance in the Force. As she says that, you can see the camera pan across the hill on the island where you can see Rey and Luke working through some lightsaber training. These speeders flying across the salt fields of Crate are new to the Star Wars universe as they aren't seen anywhere in the current canon. If you look into the distance, you can see they're going to face off against an army of AT-ATs. These could also be the Gorilla Walkers people have been talking about rumored to be called AT-4Xs. This is shaping up to be a big battle for the Resistance, as the First Order has obviously brought a ton of firepower to Crate. The mining planet is said to have provided a lot of resources to the Rebellion in the original trilogy. This is the only shot of Finn in this trailer, and he's still unconscious. When he was last seen in The Force Awakens, Finn had been knocked out and couldn't wake up. He was taken back to the base, and he was to be cared for when Rey went to find Luke. 
It looks like the resistance is under attack as Poe and BB-8 run through the halls. There are sparks flying, people fleeing, and a look of desperation on Poe's face. He's running to his X-Wing in the hangar, but the ships are torn apart as he gets close. Things are looking grim for the pilot. This could be the same attack featured earlier where the ships are approaching the walkers. If Crate is truly where the Resistance is located, these scenes definitely add up. It wouldn't be a Star Wars trailer without the Millennium Falcon, and the iconic ship is engaged in a battle with a couple of TIE fighters. Rey was the last one seen flying the ship as she headed to Octo to find Luke, accompanied by R2-D2 and Chewbacca. The next two shots display the opposite sides of the Force, as Rey and Kylo Ren are both seen with their lightsabers. As Luke can be heard saying, I only know one truth. You see a hooded figure kneeling next to R2, staring at a burning building. This is the opposite view of Luke as he appeared in Rey's vision in The Force Awakens. This is where Luke witnesses the fall of his apprentice, Ben Solo, aka Kylo Ren. A group of troopers walk into a fiery blaze, and it seems like Captain Phasma is the one leading the charge here. This could be the same fire Luke is staring at in the previous scene, but the First Order tend to burn an awful lot to the ground. The shot is immediately followed by a battle going on in the stars as both X-Wings and TIE Fighters take shots at each other. Luke can be heard one more time finishing his earlier thought. He began a few scenes prior where he said, I only know one truth, and he completes the thought by saying, It's time for the Jedi to end. As he finished those words, he is standing in a small doorway on Octo. His voice is ominous, and it's clear he has a plan in motion. This trailer marks the beginning of the hype train towards December, and we cannot wait for The Last Jedi to hit theaters. For ComicBook.com, I'm Charlie Ridgely, and we'll see you next time. Another big round of applause for Charlie Ridgely, folks. Uh, crushing it on our Shot by Shots. I love it. Uh, the crowd goes wild. Did you hear that? Can you hear him? Wow. Wow. Stop it. Sit back down. Uh, be seated. That's our time for our favorite part of the show before we give you a couple of baby groots. So just a couple more minutes, guys, and then you'll see how you can win these. Promise. Uh, they dance. So you want to stick around. They do uh, actually, you don't want that one. Uh, so <laughs> let's get to the questions, comments, concerns. Scott Eastwood section. All right, well, speaking of Scott Eastwood, did you get a chance to go see Fate of the Furious? Because your boy was in it. Scott Eastwood was in it. Did you I get did to see him? What did you think? I thought Fate of the Furious was fantastic. I thought it was the best one in the entire Oh, Scotty. There Scott he is. Scotty doesn't know how good that movie is. Oh, I see what uh, you did there. I, I really did like Fate of the Furious. I thought it was a lot of fun. I, I, it was the best of the franchise by far. I agree. It was the biggest. I agree. Uh, the Rock and Jason Statham, though, stole the show. I agree. All right. Can't give so, it to Scott. Talking about Star Wars a little bit, Jordan Evans, our good buddy, wanted to know if we think that Mace Windu might ever get a Star Wars story movie. What do you think? Uh, Samuel Jackson coming back? Um, let me think about this for a second because there is a... No. No, absolutely. It's <laughs> not mean, gonna, it's not gonna, Samuel Jackson said it at Star Wars Celebration. You know he's up for it. Samuel Jackson is up for anything. Go look at Samuel Jackson's IMDb page <laughs> and tell me when you get to the bottom. I won't wait because it'll take you till tomorrow morning. He has done. So, he'll do any movie. This is the man who did Snakes on a Plane. He will do any... I know what I'm that saying. That was awesome. I'm not... Look, Harley, stop. It was so much look, fun. Look, you know what's funny is he actually crashed one of Kurt Russell's interviews at the Guardians of the Galaxy Junket. Like, I don't know what it was. I think he went and interviewed him himself for a little promo video. It was kind of cool. But anyway, awesome. back to Mace Windu. No, it's not going to happen. There are other priorities. Uh, how about an Obi-Wan movie? Stop talking about I'd Mace I'd rather Windu. have an Obi-Wan movie. I do want to see Mace Windu come back at some point, though, and that's what, that's what Samuel Jackson Only if it's R-rated about. and he can say the F word every other That'd second. be awesome. Like, F on Jedi, it's fine. Yeah. All right. I've had um, it with these mother <laughs> Sith. <laughs> Zachary Weiss wanted to know um, if you think maybe Doctor Strange will be in Thor. You might have some information that you can or can't say. Doctor Strange is in Thor. He is 100% in Thor, no doubt about it. Doctor Strange is in Thor right Well, there you have it. There you have it. I think we've heard it before, but we're just going to reiterate it. I promise. <laughs> all right. Uh, Reese Williams, he's been tweeting at us all day. He wants us to have another bet um, about the, the Last Jedi box 600 office. million? Yeah. Worldwide? Let's I'll take the under. Okay, let's, let's think about it. Be careful. Let's think about it, Reese. He also wanted to know, um, and you might know the answer to this, now that Black Panther has finished filming, when are we likely to see a trailer for the movie? This is another thing we talked about at the uh, Marvel Studios mm -hmm. Open House, actually. Great question, Reese. Uh, I'll tell you, it's going to be a while. It's probably, mm -hmm. It might be this summer. It's, uh, Kevin Feige says probably this summer, but he's not for sure yet. Uh, I got to see a bunch of footage from the film, and it looked so awesome. It looked so cool. They had, I mean, the Dora Milaje mm -hmm. was kicking ass, man. Dude, th these women are, are beating people up left and right, and it was really cool. Uh, they showed us a couple scenes. Uh, one was Chadwick Boseman mm -hmm. coming down uh, into Warrior Falls, becoming the king. And they had the whole village on the waterfall decked out, uh, dancing for him. They had the Dormelage sailing to it. Uh, yeah. It was a shot of the boat, and they were doing like some sort of tribal dance. And then they had um, all the people of Wakanda sailing to them. 
And it was it? And there was one scene. Oh, this was such a cool scene. It was a casino, and um, uh, Chadwick Boseman, the Black Panther, and Okoye are sitting down. You don't see them when 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 Andy Serkis walks in, and he walks in with a bunch of guys, and uh, Denai Guerrero is narrating. She's got eight, he's got eight men with him. We can't take him. He comes down. He comes down the stairs. He the camera pans over, and he's meeting with Martin Freeman. And it was just uh, they were had some meeting, That's and they so make cool. a joke about so uh, cool. Martin Freeman's like. Oh, you brought your whole squad. When's the mixtape drop? And then Claw just kind of makes a joke like, oh, yeah, the mixtape, because he's got that weird Andy Serkis accent that he mm. kind of put on for this movie. Uh, but And then a fight, like a whole gunfight breaks out in this casino, and Martin Freeman and uh, Black, uh, Black Panther... Uh, T'Challa just start kicking ass. It was it was super cool. Uh, I'm sorry I made you jealous. The footage was fantastic. Uh, as for the trailer, to answer your question, Reese, quite simply, I would expect it this summer, maybe with Spider-Man Homecoming. Maybe, maybe Comic-Con? Probably Comic-Con. Okay. Uh, that's around the time of Spider-Man Homecoming. I would mm -hmm. be surprised if they were to hold it for two weeks instead of putting it with Spider-Man. All right, we got two questions left. First, uh, Maravel Rodriguez um, has to bring something up for you because we didn't address it yet today. Well, Walking Dead. When will The Walking Dead start again? Do you know? Is this writer's strike maybe going to affect that? What's, what's your thought, BD? Well, they're, they're supposed to start production for season eight this Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, they just got their scripts. We just talked about Chandler Riggs, tweeted about getting his scripts. They're all going back. As far as I know, they're all going. I've talked to a couple cast members. They're going to Atlanta this week to start production. Mm -hmm. The writer's strike is set to take effect on May 1st. Right. If it does, they can't shoot anymore. They, they can't use They can't. They're not going to have scripts. So... It depends on the writer's strike. If the writer's strike goes into effect, the last one lasted over four months. If that happens, I don't even know if they're going to have a trailer at Comic-Con. Yeah. Uh, I hope the writer's strike comes, I hope they come to an agreement, the writers mm -hmm. get what they want, and everyone's happy, and we get our Walking Dead, and every, literally everyone is happy. Right. Uh, but that's all I know for now. Expect the trailer. If the writer's strike doesn't happen, expect the trailer at San Diego Comic-Con, mm -hmm. which is late July, and expect the show to start either October 15th or 22nd. One of yeah, you know, even if the writer's strike does occur, we can still have the show in the fall, um, but we just won't have a lot of the footage and a lot of like the pre-stuff going on. It'll be a much I mean, more difficult process getting there. They yeah. might have to cut episodes. I, yeah, they might have to delay it. If they before. can't start filming, if they can't start filming in May and they don't mm -hmm. start until September, they're not going to have episodes ready in October. No, absolutely. They're going to maybe do that, that. Maybe one of those two-part seasons. Entourage did that during the last writer's strike. They kind of split up their season. Breaking Bad did that. I hope it doesn't come to that. I hope they can resolve yeah. um, before it happens. But... We'll see in the coming weeks. And last but not least, Sarah B.G. Blair Thanks, on Sarah. Twitter wants to know, will Hela be next to Thanos in Avengers 3? You know, we, we talked about the possibility of Hela being uh, like Lady Death in the comics, in the MCU. What do you think, B.D.? I mean, I don't have any uh, insider info on this, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I just think she's going to be in Avengers Infinity War. I think she's a really powerful villain, a really, really powerful villain in Thor Ragnarok. And I think that she will probably be leading into... Avengers Infinity War, because not saying anything about Guardians of the Galaxy <laughs> Volume 2, but Thor Ragnarok is the last movie besides Guardians that can lead into Infinity War, if you think about it. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be Black Panther. That's going to be talking right. about Wakanda and the story going on on Earth. And you have Spider-Man Homecoming. That's grounded in New York City and mm -hmm. Washington, D.C. a little bit. That's not going to lead into Infinity War. Thor Ragnarok is the last cosmic adventure before we go to Infinity right. War. Maybe the Guardians pop up there. Maybe it all leads to Infinity War. Uh, now, when you, say, when you say maybe, you mean like, oh, I know and I'm teasing maybe? Or are you, or are you just saying maybe because, because that's what you think and that's what you hope? I mean, maybe a little bit of both. Okay. I, I think, well, I, I really do believe that Thor Ragnarok, uh, what I know about it and what I expect from it and what I hope from it will probably be a pretty good setup. And I, okay. I just remember when I talked to the Russo brothers, actually, uh, at the Civil War event a year ago now, um, I asked them, who are you most excited to work with in Avengers Infinity War? And uh, Joe Russo said Thor because he loves where Thor Ragnarok leaves him. So that sounds like they're mm -hmm. really picking up right where Thor Ragnarok leaves off. Okay. So go see Thor Ragnarok. It's going to be important. Yeah. All right. And now the time you've all been waiting for. That's our show. I'm just we kidding. are going to give away a two. Fit. No, it's not broken. It's fine. It's got a big box. Two baby Groots. Um, they dance and they're fun and they're awesome. And all you have to do right now, I am on the Comic Book Now Twitter account. And I'm in three, two, one. Just send a tweet from Comic Book Now. Make sure you favorite and retweet that tweet if you want to win this. And we will pick two lucky winners. One of you will each get one of these dancing groups. So go head to Twitter, retweet, and win a group. Look at the dance. <laughs>
I mean, once you see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, you're going to want this. You probably want it already. But yeah, that's, that's it. It's that simple. At Comic Book Now on Twitter. Go hit retweet, and uh, you might win a Groot. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Uh, tell your friends. Hit that share button. We appreciate it. On behalf of Comic Book Nation and Charlie Ridgely, I'm Brandon Davis. We will see you next week. Pretty cool. Cool, cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It was really cool. That's pretty cool. You had a really cool scene with Rocket. Yeah, that would be that's gonna be really cool. Avengers are such a cool bunch of people. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Really cool. Thank you so much, Thanks. man.